good morning and welcome to Sunday morning worship at Faith Church. We are glad to have you here with us and we hope you're having a wonderful day. It's been an exciting week in America. It's been absolutely wild. I mean, we had an inauguration. It made uh, goosebumps pop up all over me. I don't know how it was for you, but I just enjoyed that little poet laureate, that little uh, Amanda um, what was her name? Um, uh, uh, Dorman. That was awesome. We really enjoyed that. Enjoyed the whole thing. Enjoyed uh, my favorite hymn being sung by, um, by the country western singer. I enjoyed it all. Hope you had a great time. Uh, just to bring you up to date, we know that uh, everybody's praying about uh, the vaccine. Some folks in our congregation and our family have gotten it. Praise the Lord. Hope it works. We hear a lot about these new variants that are coming up from the UK and from other places. And our hope and prayer is that the vaccine that we have on the market is able to, uh, to stop that uh, disease in its tracks. Let's just keep our prayers going about that. Let's also pray for everybody to be safe continuously. And uh, I believe God is answering our prayers right now. I think that things are going to go well. And, you know, we just believe God for the very best in all the things that we're facing. And we're facing a lot of things. We want to ask you to remember all the exciting stuff going on at Faith Church this week, too. Um, Wednesday night, you know, we have Bible study. Um, that's over Zoom. And uh, I think we're still uh, into prayer this week. And and uh, our teacher is uh, still this week going to be uh, Yolette. So it's going to be a great time. Hope you can jump into that. It's going to be wonderful. Well, it's uh, Sunday morning, and it's time for the Word of God. And uh, this morning, we want to introduce a subject that is uh, not talked about. I certainly haven't preached about it a whole lot, but it's, uh, it's about identity. It's about your identification. And uh, uh, the subject is your identity determines your inheritance, your identity determines your inheritance. And, you know, that makes a lot of sense because if um, my children outlive me, they will receive an inheritance from me. Maybe only a dollar, but whatever it is, they get a chance to get it. And how it's determined whether they get it is if, if their name is recorded in all of the legal papers. If they are identified as the beneficiary, uh, if they um, are recognized as my true children, and we know they are, so that, that works out well. Um, but, you know, we are the children of God. And because we're the children of God, we have that God DNA. We have, uh, we have him in us. We have his Holy Spirit in us. And so we ask the question, your identity determines your inheritance. And here's the question, are you in? Are you in? And we'll talk about what that means in a minute. When Alabama, University of Alabama, uh, my favorite football team, won the national championship a few days ago, um, my words that came out of my mouth, we won, we won. And a lot of times when our teams win, that's what we shout, we won, we won. And what do we mean by the we? Because, I mean, let's just face it, I'm not a football player, and, uh, but still I said we won. Um, I wasn't on the field. I didn't kick any field goals. I didn't catch any passes. I didn't score any touchdowns. I didn't even get to be on the field or on the bench or anything. Uh, yet here I am screaming, we won. We won. So how can I say that? How can I say we won? Well, I identify with that team. I went to school there. I left a lot of money there. And I, you know, I have an affection for the team, its history, its heritage, its players. And I, you know, I identify with the University of Alabama, with the Crimson Tide. Now, when I say we, what I mean is because the team I support 
and the team I identify with won. You know, I, I personally did not go out there and win the game, but we won. And because they won, well, I won too, because I identify with them. You get it? Now, now stick with me. Now, there's an important spiritual truth here in all of this sports talk. Uh, for you as a redeemed child of God, identify with God. Identify with Christ. Identify with the Holy Spirit. And if you are truly a redeemed child of God, then, you know, your identification is clear because there's something in you, because you're in someone, because there is a connection, because there's a relationship, because the DNA of Christ is mixed up with your DNA, the DNA of God is mixed up with your DNA, and that's important, and that makes you identify with Christ. Make sense? Now, you get it? Why we say when the University of Alabama wins, I can say, we won, because I have an identification with them. Think about it like this. When Jesus uh, arose, and he did, uh, you arose too. You know, Jesus rose, and when he rose, you rose. Now, in order for you um, and Jesus to rise, you both had to die. Now, we know that Christ died, um, but the question is, did you die? You know, he died, and the question is, did, did you die? Now, watch this. Uh, you did rise. You did rise. You did die. You died to sin. Now, with him, you rose. You know, Christ arose. You arose. Just, I know this is elementary, but we want to just walk through it because we want to understand how we identify with Christ. He died. We died. He arose, and we arose. And when we arose then we arose to walk with him to walk in newness of life. That's exactly what is said in the book of Romans, chapter 6, verse 4. We walk in newness of life with him. Well, you can't live a new life until you have put down the old life. And in order to pick up a new life, you have to end another life, your old life, your old life of sin, being controlled by sin, and the like. So now you see that you're getting kind of an identification with Christ. You died with him. You were raised with him when you were baptized, when you were, um, when you decided, you made a decision that you were going to follow him. And what happened is he came inside of you and started to living inside of you in the form of his Holy Spirit. So now you are in a relationship with him, and because of the relationship that you have with him, there are some exciting things going on in your life. Now, follow me still. The difference between you and that team that won the national championship is the fact that you're never going to play, and I'm never going to play, I'm never going to be in the championship game with anybody on the Crimson Tide. My time for being on the football team have ended. Uh, in fact, they never started. <laughs> yeah. so, so, so that's never going to happen. But what is going to happen is, is the fact that when Jesus won at the cross, um, and you accepted him as your Savior when Jesus won at the cross, and you accepted him as your Savior, God positioned you in Christ. I mean, does that make any sense? Jesus died, and when he died, he didn't just die. He died in a horrible fashion. Every sin that you and I have ever committed, every evil thought we've ever harbored, every evil thing that has been cooked up in our hearts and minds was nailed to the cross with Jesus Christ. And he got victory uh, for us, and he died on that cross, and he was 
buried and he died and we died with him. But he didn't stay dead. He got up on the third day. He arose from the dead. And if you believe in Christ and if you've given your life to Christ, then you did the same thing. You have already been raised. You got it? And you inherited something called eternal life. And we'll talk about that eternal life in a minute. Now, according to 2 Corinthians um, chapter 5, verse 21, here's what Paul says. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then we are heirs. That makes sense. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. Now, we need to break this down because we belong to God. Make sense? Jesus is God, but Jesus is one of the three persons of God, and the other is the Holy Spirit. And each one of these characters play a part in our giving our lives to Jesus and having a relationship with God. And that makes us heirs of God because we are children of God. And number two, it makes us joint heirs with Jesus because Jesus is the Son of God. That makes sense. So we understand this, and according to Paul's word in Second Corinthians, the Spirit himself bears witness. You see the work of the Spirit? The Spirit bears witness inside of you that you are the children of God. But he takes it a step further, and he says, if you're children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Because whose spirit is in us, class? It is the spirit of Christ. It is his spirit that res resides in us. I tell you, this gets exciting. Now, did you get it? I mean, did you really grab a hold of that? As a redeemed child of God, as a redeemed child of God, you are an heir, you're an heir of everything your heavenly Father owns. And it gets better because not only do you get a share of everything that the heavenly Father owns, but you also are a joint heir with Jesus Christ. You are a joint heir with Jesus the Christ. In other words, you don't have to wait until you die physically to receive your inheritance. What? You, you get it now. Um, we actually have two periods where we get an inheritance. We get an inheritance. A lot of people say, well, when I get to heaven, I'm going to get it all. No, 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 no. You're going to get some of it here. You're going to get, you're already receiving stuff like grace. You don't have to go to heaven to get grace. You get grace here, forgiveness. You get all that here, peace. That is, that is your inheritance for living on this earth. Now, yeah, you're going to get a, a big additional, you know, inheritance, but that's coming down the road. That's coming when you're in heaven. But right now, you have an inheritance also. I would be depressed if I felt like I had to die in order to get everything that God had for me. God has some things for me right here, and I'm going to take every one of them because it's mine. I am an heir I am an heir of God because I'm a child of God. And those are benefits. Those are elements of the inheritance that I have access to. And when you understand this truth, you begin uh, to walk according to it. I mean, a lot of people walk today and they don't walk according to this truth. They walk as if they ain't got nothing. They walk as if, you know, I'm broke, I'm, I'm sick, I'm, I'm not going to get better. It's never going to be any improvement over my current situation. Well, that's not the Word of God. And when you walk by the, 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 the manner and the spirit that God has placed in you because of what God has done for you, then you 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 shame God. You you are slapping Christ in the face when we say, you know, I'm I'm just not going. It's not going to be any better. 
It just can't get any better. Good things happen to other people. Nothing good happens to me. Well, if you're a child of God, there's some good stuff going to happen to you. I mean, if it's nothing but you get to take another breath. Whatever it is, you're going to get an inheritance right now in this life, in this current set of circumstances. These blessings that we get include uh, such things as, like I said before, grace, forgiveness, provision. You know, God has promised provision for our mission, for our destiny, where it is we're going. God has made uh, all kinds of of promises about that. And the guidance of God. Isn't it great to know that a light unto our path is he? I mean, that stuff you get right here. Now, I am not a legal scholar. (laughs) <laughs> but not by any stretch of the imagination. But this is what I do know. I do know that in order for uh, for us to get an inheritance, somebody has to die. <laughs> somebody somebody has to pass away before we can exercise our rights as beneficiaries. Now, somebody died, and who was it? It was Christ. Jesus Christ died for your sins. And our inheritance is all this stuff that I just named, including guidance, including strength, including all the things that God gave Jesus we have access to. All right? Now, you ready to dig a little bit deeper in the scripture? All right, well, let's go. Your identity is determined by who's in you. Your identity is determined by who's in you. You know, some people are full of themselves, and that's their identity. And they are full of, of uh, you know, self-righteousness. But self-righteousness does not get you a good eye in heaven. I mean, God does not look on you with favor if you are self-righteous. We have to have the righteousness of Jesus Christ in order for us to be the righteous persons that God would like for us to be. Your identity is determined by who's in you. Now, I want you to turn in your Bibles to Romans chapter 8, verse 9 and 10. Look at this. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. Now, I want to repeat that. You and I are not in the flesh any longer. We are in the spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you, Spirit of God dwells in you, now if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. If anybody doesn't have the Spirit of Christ, well, he is not his. Now verse 10. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. Now, what does all this stuff mean? It means this. Before Jesus Christ found us, wherever we were found by him, we were wretched and we were being led by a spirit that was in us, but it was not the spirit of Christ. We were being led by a spirit which is the spirit of evil, the spirit of the flesh, if you please. And this spirit of the flesh is what you see exhibited in little babies, little children. You know, they, all they care about is what they want when they want it. And what they do is they cry and they hit and they scream and they are just evil. <laughs> They're just evil. They're just wretched. But that's the way we are. And unfortunately, we got some 36-year-olds and some 60-year-olds and some 70-year-olds who are the same way. I want what I want when I want it. And you know what? That does not reflect, does not resemble the Spirit of God. That does not re- reflect the Spirit of Christ. And what the Scripture says is that the body can only be inhabited by one spirit. And If your old spirit, the spirit of the flesh, is what is leading you, you know, leading you to get drunk and leading you to get stoned and leading you to commit adultery, that 
fleshly spirit is the spirit that you're being led by. That's what's in you. That's what's in you. That's what you're into. But Jesus said, whoever is in you leads you. And remember, you know, the Holy Spirit of God does not dwell in an unclean place. And if your heart is wicked and your head is wicked and your actions are wicked, then Jesus can't live in you. He can't not be in you. His DNA will not mix with that DNA. It is just like, you know, two different kinds of entities, two different kinds of beings. Holy Spirit and the evil spirit, they don't hook up. They don't mix. And that's the reason that it's important for us to ask the question, <laughs> who's in you? You know, who is in you? You look at little children and say, oh, man, that, 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 that's, uh, that's, that's he's just like his daddy. <laughs> like, he's just like him, just like his mom. I mean, well, he's got to look like somebody, got to act like somebody. And sure enough, the DNA is in there, and there is a mixture, and you have what you call a dominant DNA, which determines the sex of the child and a lot of other features. Well, it's the same way with us when we get the Spirit of God in us. And some of us are fooling ourselves, and it just ain't in us. I mean, we're just not his children. Some of us are just not his children because he is not in us. We still have that evil spirit, that unholy spirit in us. And as a result, we don't look like him. We don't act like him. We don't talk like him. We don't think like him. We don't do anything. And as a result, we don't get his inheritance. Not here, not eternally. We just don't get it. And the reason we don't is because he's not in us. Whoever is in you becomes you. When you are led by your flesh, you just get worse and worse in the way you operate. You just become more intense in the wrong that you do. But when Christ comes to live in you, when he gets placed in you by God, when you uh, get counted among the elect of God and Christ lives in you and his Holy Spirit lives in you, guess what happens, man? Here's what happens. He begins to grow you. He begins to go through a process that we call sanctification. And what we mean by that is you start every day getting more and more and more and more like Christ. And when you get more and more like Christ, you will become, you know, holier. You will become perfected in Christ. You know, he'll make you complete. So your identity is determined by who is in you. So the question on the floor this morning is, is Christ in you? Is Christ in you? In you, If you don't talk like Christ, if you don't look like Christ, if you don't think like Christ, then Christ is not in you. So who's in you also determines your inheritance. Who's in you determines your inheritance. Now in life, and here I come, I'm going to pontificate for a minute. In life, in natural inheritance, um, only the testator has to die, okay? Only the person who made the will has to die in order for the will uh, to be carried out. You got it? Good. Now, in order for the beneficiary to receive his, her inheritance, the testator has to die. You know, there, there, it's, there's a law against you know, pretending to be dead and, 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 and everybody coming to get the inheritance. It doesn't work like that. The, the person has got to actually die. There's got to be a certificate of death produced in order for the will to be affected and for the beneficiaries to be called up. So, but in, a, in, in supernatural inheritance, both the testator and the beneficiary must die. Now, I don't want to get you confused, and I want you to understand this. Now, we've got the inheritance of natural things on this earth. Money, um, property, 
real estate, all those kind of things. That's natural stuff, and you can inherit that stuff, but one person has to die, and that's the person who willed it. The person who is the beneficiary, all that person has to do is live, and that person is going to get it regardless of, you know, what else happens that will is going to be read, and that person is going to receive that thing. But now, when we're talking about supernatural, supernatural inheritance, it's a little bit different. When we talk about um, getting what God has ordained for us to get eternally, we both have to die. The testator, Jesus Christ, and the beneficiary, us, we all have to die. And Pastor, when did I die? And you already told me I got an inheritance. Well, you died on the day that you allowed Christ to come into your life. When you allowed him to not just take up residence in your heart, but take up the presidency in your heart. And God has blessed that and allowed that to happen. But something died. What died was your flesh. Your flesh died. You know, sin no longer has an impact on you because your flesh is dead. The spirit of the devil used to take you to the, you know, to the liquor store. The spirit of Christ will keep you from it. You know, the spirit of Christ will do great things in you because he's now in charge. He's now running things and you had to die in order for that to happen. Well, Pastor, I, I, I really am excited about getting, you know, Jesus living in me. But you know what? I'm not anxious to die. Well, you will not be harmed by the death that you die when you die to flesh and you die to self. Because what's going to happen is you will immediately get started on a new life. And that new life is a life that has been given to you by God, and that life is going to be an eternal life, and it is going to last forever. You see, a lot of people look at death uh, as a cataclysmic event, and, you know, it's going to hurt, and it's going to be painful, and it's going to be bad, and it's going to be terrible. It's not like that for Christians, for God's people, because what happens is, when we close our eyes in death, we open our eyes in heaven. It's just like going to sleep at night. I mean, you go to sleep, you wake up the next day, and it's a brand new day. Well, it's a brand new day. It's only in a different place, and that place is heaven. And I understand it's a pretty cool place. And I think it's all right for us to want to be there. We have started on that journey of eternal life already. We are already on it. Well, Pastor, we're not dead. Oh, but your body is, your flesh is dead. That's dead. And now you get to live that eternal life. And you get to live that eternal life uh, for, for forever. So there's some blessings that are going to come to us in the, uh, in the hereafter. But there's some blessings that are going to come to us right now. And that makes me very happy. And that's where our inheritance comes in based on who's in us. And, okay, we've got the blessings here. We've also got the blessings there. Romans 8.11 says, But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also live to your mortal bodies through his spirit, who dwells in you. We'll close with this. There was a, a time when a Jewish leader came to Jesus and he asked him a very simple question. And, but it was convoluted a little bit because it, it, it had a word in there that did not line up with uh, the question he was asking. He said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? You remember that story? You can probably repeat it word for word. Um, but this rabbi, this teacher, this person came to Jesus and asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? 
And Jesus said, well, you need to do this, you need to do that, you need to do this. And, and the teacher pretty much finished the sentence for him. He said, I've done all that stuff from my youth. I, I'm, I'm great. I, I've done that. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good. I'm, 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 I got all that worked out. But he went back to his question, what must I do to inherit eternal life? You see, this is a person who felt like he already had access to eternal life, already had it. And what he was really asking was, how do I keep from being kicked out of this club? You know, what do I need to do in order to keep from losing what has been promised to me? And a lot of us are that way. What do I need to do to just stay right inside of the safety zone? And Jesus gave him a parable. And he said, you know, there was a, a man who fell among thieves. And this man was mugged and he was robbed. And a couple of religious people passed him by. And he said, there was a, another man who came along and he caught his attention. And he went to him and he nurtured him and he cared for him. And he took him to a place where he could be cared for as he continued his journey. And he paid for the man's needs. And he said, if anything else is required, he says, I'll pay you for it on my way back. Now, Jesus told a story that is relevant even today. Because this was a story of religiosity versus person in Christ. Even though this person who came along was a Samaritan, even though this person was not a religious leader, even though this person was not a holy roller, this person opened up his heart, opened up his wallet, and opened up his time and stepped up and help somebody who didn't look like him, who didn't talk like him, but they all had something in common. They had the Spirit of Christ in them. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have the Spirit of Christ in you today, you're getting an inheritance. If you don't have the Spirit of Christ in you, I'm praying for you. Can we do that right now? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for all your blessings, Lord. We praise your name for who you are. And we thank you, Jesus, that we have the promise of the inheritance because Christ lives in us. And Christ is teaching us daily. And we're becoming more like Christ every day. Father, help us to be what you have designed us to be in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Do you pray that prayer with me? good. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the end of this day of worship, and we pray that God will just watch over you during this day. If you would like to, you know, communicate with, uh, with us here at the church, just go to our website. Information's on the screen. And if you will just, uh, you know, tap in, say hi. Just tell us what this, you know, worship has meant to you. We'll be most grateful. May the good Lord bless you till we see you next week. Bye.